Hello everyone. This is the second video in the communications between components series, and today、uh, I'm gonna talk about the rod parameters. So the rod parameters are used to help us communicate between page components as well as between、uh, non-page components and page components. To demonstrate, I created Teams component and Team component. Right, the teams component is a list of teams, and the team component is the detail of that team, and also showing the member of that team. And uh, uh, in order to display them, like because currently we don't see it on the menu, so in order to display them,、um, I am going to also add the navigation menu,、uh, just like last time,、uh, but. Make sure we have proper route. When we come to the navigation menu, we clean up this a little bit. We change this to Teams, and we change this to Teams. As once we refresh the page, we can go to our Teams, and we see a list of Teams. And for now,、uh, let's take a look at the codes that I had. So, so I basically have a Teams variable here. And I initialize the variable and populate hard coded some values here,、um, and I created this、uh, team class here. Usually, all of these should be、uh, created separately as models and、uh, dependency injection into the Razor components. But、uh, since I haven't covered dependency injection,、um, so I'm hard coding these over here. What my、uh, expected behavior is is that when we click on any of these teams, we go to the team component, the team page component, and display the detailed information about that particular team that you clicked on. Our code here, our markups, HTML markups, we can see that I used for each loop and created the.、Uh, The rows within the tables and、uh, it's displaying team and、uh, team team region and also、uh, I have a、uh, anchor element here going to the the team page component. So when I click on it, it goes to the team component. Unfortunately,、uh, every single one of them go to the team component. The team component is empty, right? So let's go to our team component over here. And、uh, it has pre-populated some codes, but it does nothing.、Um, as I said, that、uh, these should be created as models and dependency injection into the Razor components, but I'm just hard coding it right right now. So don't worry too much about them.、Uh, so I want to display the detailed information about the team as well as the members. So I have these data here to kind of represent the member、uh, database table. Right, so you'd have a list of members, and you know,、um, you know、uh, the、uh, you know the IDs of them, and you also should have、uh, a the team team ID, right, to indicate which team the member belong to. So for that, I'm gonna create a. Team ID property, and then I'm gonna go over here and populate that property. Team ID equals one, and I'm going to、uh, let them to become different teams. All right. So, but the thing is, how do we pass that? Uh, information about which team we have selected. That's、uh, where the rod parameters come into the picture. So,、uh, in order to do that, so here、uh, we can say that、um, basically here we can say slash team.、Uh, And then we give the team dot、uh, the ID. 
slash. All right, so that gives the proper rod parameter here. So if we go back here, we can see that at the bottom left corner, you can see each one of them has a team ID appended at the URL, right? But the thing is, when you click on it, it's going to say they, it's, you know, there's nothing at this address, right? So we have to change our team component to accept that parameter. And to do that, it's actually pretty easy. We come over here and we say, you know, uh, this is, I'm uh, expecting an ID parameter. Uh, and then we come over here and we create a corresponding property and we call it ID, right? And within here, you can say parameter and uh, and this corresponds to the ID, right? And let's see what happens when we do this. All right. Refresh, click on it. All right, so we have received a uh, exception and so what is happening let's um, take a look at the uh, developer tool so it's complaining that unable to set property ID on the object of team component the error was unable to cast object type string to integer okay so that is telling us that it's considered as, as a string, but we are expecting an integer. So what do we do in that case? We set up a constraint here. We're saying, okay, I'm expecting integer, right? So if, another way to do it is that we can change this to integer. Sorry, change this from uh, integer to string. So let's do that. And then we refresh. All right, so now we're going to team, to the team component, but we are not loading any data yet. At least we're passing that property, right? Uh, we can say, you know, we can say over here, we pass in that ID. Let's display that ID, refresh the page, okay? Yeah, we'll properly pass it in the ID from uh, the team's page to the team page. So that's the communication between different pages, right? So in order to properly, properly display the page, uh, we, we can come over here and we can say that, you know, uh, I'm searching through the, uh, we can use link to query the team's variable that I have it here. Um, we can say that um, if the ID equals uh, this dot ID, which is our uh, parameter, rod parameter, then that's the team that we are looking for, right? And uh, it gives an error here, right? Because uh, this is a string and this by itself is an integer right this is integer so it doesn't want to do that so let's change it to integer and then we will add the parameter constraint and we're telling that we're telling blazer that this parameter is an integer right so so now this is fine so we will have our team so once we have our team we come over here and we say that the uh you know the name is uh, um team dot uh, dot name then talisense is not great yet it seems that it's a little bit slow so here we can have uh, region right and let's see whether that works or not so I saved and then I refresh okay let's go to red team so we have red team here properly the parameters properly passed in and our link query is also working okay cool um all right next is that we we're trying to display the members right uh we're going to create another uh, uh 
place here and then uh, we are going to find our members first which is uh, we have it here and uh, we need to find all of the members uh, so the members are from the members I want to find the members who belong to the team so team ID equals this dot ID which this ID again is the parameter value the raw parameter value so then we would have all of the members right so we have our members here and then we come over here we say for each sorry um, actually so here we want to uh, display it in a list uh, to save some time instead of displaying a table and uh, here we're gonna have for each and we're gonna have variable member in the stop members and uh, here we're gonna say li and we're gonna say member dot name well um, pipeline member dot uh, H intelligence. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, name and H. Yeah, that's good. And then uh, let's see when we refresh our page. So go to our right team. We have team name is red, region is region one, and John's age is twenty, Mike's age is twenty five. Going back to teams, go to blue team, and we have Joe, 26, Ross, 21. And yellow, we have Ryan, 23, and Fox, 22. So there we go. We have uh, parameters passed in as raw parameters. And then going to the different page from, parent, uh, from teams page to team page, and we uh, successfully load data and display data based on the passing raw parameters. Okay, that's everything I want to cover. If you like my video, please hit like and subscribe. And next episode, I'm going to cover uh, cascading parameter values. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode.